So we're now going to launch into a session of lightning talks by leaders of the spokes that Renee mentioned. And our first speaker is Chirag Patel. You can start coming up. Um, Chirag is professor of bio, uh, in, um, biomedical informatics at Harvard Medical School. And he is the PI on the Health Spoke project. And today he'll be speaking about integration of environmental factors and causal reasoning approaches for large scale observational health research. Great, thank you. Thanks for inviting uh, me, of course, and I, I, I thank, thank my, my many thanks to the NSF and, of course, uh, Kathy McEwen and, and Katie and, and Renee for, for organizing a great event here. Uh, so I'm gonna talk to you about, uh, this clip is not seeming to work here, about how we're gonna enhance uh, the search for environmental factors associated with disease uh, using the tools of big data. And so, like I like to tell my, um, uh, my intro genetics uh, students, phenotypes or disease are a function of things that come down from mom and dad, or genetics or genomic variants, environmental exposures, things that we're exposed to every day, like infectious agents, nutrients, diet, uh, pollutants, and drugs, right? So at the end of the day, we really want to, in biology, biomedicine, figure out how to, how to solve this equation to, to essentially figure out how to, how to position uh, risk for disease. And so we're great at genomic investigation today. I won't talk about uh, genomics, it's, even though it's near and dear to my heart, but we really have these new high throughput big data ways of looking for gen genotypes or genetic factors related for, with disease. But we really have no big data platform to do this for environmental exposures. Nothing comparable like what we have in genomics today to elucidate in a high throughput fashion environmental factors associated with disease risk factors. So I'll, I'll gloss over some of the details here, but if another uh, plot that I'll show just to motivate this even fur further is human geneticists today have this mo notion of, of, of calculating how much genetic uh, genetics contributes to, uh, to disease, and this is known as the heritability. And so you can compute the heritability through family-based studies uh, to ascertain how much variance in phenotype or variance in disease, if you will, is due to variance in genotypes. And here I pull down uh, estimates of heritability. It ranges from zero to 100, and 100 would be a trait that would be most heritable or completely genetically controlled. So at the bottom here, you know, in the 100, or in the era, in the region of over 75 percent, or include things like eye color, hair color, uh, higher curliness, height, and, and things like this. But on the top here, things that we, uh, we I would say, argue that we really care about today, things like cancer, type 2 diabetes, asthma, are, all have lower heritabilities under 50 percent. So here's type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and asthma. So there's a large uh, amount of variation in these phenotypes, if you will, to, uh, descri to ascribe to environmental risk factors. And again, we don't have the big data tools to uh, understand the amount of variation coming from the environment. Um, but I think projects like this could help us get to that. Okay, so how can we drive discovery of environmental things associated with disease phenotypes? And that's what this project is all about. We, at its heart, our mission is essentially to en enhance accessibility of clinical environmental databases and tools and analytics to, to really uh, push forward this, this, uh, this, new, this new discipline. And it comes with, uh, I'm very honored to be a part of this the great group of people to help me on this mission here. Uh, folks to help us with the analytics include Greg Cooper at Pittsburgh and Vasant Honavar at Penn State. And of course, uh, Naomi El Haddad right here at Columbia to, to really uh, punch forward the, these new clinical uh, data stores. And so where do we get our disease data? So we're, in a sense, we're trying to match up these different types of data modalities. And so first of all, the first question is, where do you get your data from? Our disease data is coming from, 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 from doctors, okay? So we're in the midst of this big data revolution in, in medical science today, in which all this stuff, all these records, essentially that have been collected on paper, are now uh, being digitalized. So this is all going into a computer, which we all like because we can compute over. So we have all these records, uh, as, uh, as uh, for example, as Renee was talking about earlier, on almost uh, a, a billions of records that we could infer over to understand uh, the, the contributions of environmental factors in, with disease. And so, for example, we have access through the Odyssey Project, uh, longitudinal data on millions of patients. These include all their, uh, their diagnoses, uh, prescriptions, lab reports, and even uh, notes from the physician. Um, and it's sitting there in multiple IT institutional infrastructure, uh, sitting there in a data warehouse in different parts of the U.S. But we have this great tool called the Observational Health Data Science uh, and Informatics Initiative, housed coordinator right here at Columbia, 
that has this nice unified model that you could actually tap into these different institutions' data stores to actually get all of these, these, this longitudinal data on millions of patients. Okay, so you have this electronic data store, and uh, here's, here's kind of the, the splash screen of Odyssey. It's a great, great uh, resource for individuals around the, U around the U.S. and around the world, actually, to contribute their uh, institutional data. So here's a, a snapshot of, of different institutes that are contributing their data model, essentially, or their data to, to do these types of uh, observational health data research. Okay, so we have millions of patients uh, basically ready to do some type of observational research on. Uh, and so you have all these data stores occurring all over the world that we can actually uh, hack with. Now, where do we get environmental information, all right? So environmental information is also omnipresent and also uh, produced by our federal government. Hopefully it'll stay there, uh, given the new administration. But that's where, we're, where we come in and try to unify this information because it's not yet unified in a place where it's uh, centrally accessible. All right, so we, these things can be geological, for example, the things from NASA, things from uh, the National Oceanic Administration, like climate data. Um, it could be things like air pollution data from the EPA coming from their air data store. It can be things from the Commerce, uh, the Department of Commerce, like, these, uh, like the, the, the ACS survey, which is the gold standard survey that you probably have participated in that gets, gives estimates on socioeconomic information in, in different parts of the U.S., all parts of the U.S. Epidemiological data from gold standard uh, uh, institutes, uh, gold standard data sets from, the, uh, from institutes like the Center, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the USDA. So all of these data sets have one thing in common and that they're geolocated. That is, you can get information on a particular location and time. And so this is our central way of linking to patient data is through geolocation. So it's the central key challenge of our project is number one, how to link patients in Odyssey to, uh, as a function of location and time, to environmental exposures. And so we'll do this, uh, for example, here are the different uh, uh, data stores we're, we're integrating over. We'll do this with our extra, extra special, uh, what we're calling this exposome DB that takes into account a patient's location and time, and it'll annotate that particular patient, impute, if you will, uh, uh, some, uh, some ideas of their, their air pollution that they're exposed to, their, their, the local income in the area, and perhaps even things like pollen count. All right, five minutes left here. So what we'd like to do is produce this nice big data matrix that contains both patient information and all this other environmental-based information to, to really do inference over. I think it'll work. Um, so, for example, let me show you. So, let me show you some examples. So, you're on Lee, uh, uh, a master's student at the School of Public Health. Recently, mashed up these types of administrative data. Looked at 84,000 emergency room visits with weather station data. Try to ask the question: Are is pediatric asthma related to, in fact, uh, uh, fluctuations in temperature? So with these data, you can actually get important information about prevalence of asthma around the United States. And this here's a plot of, uh, you can see high hotspots of asthma uh, um, as a function of location. And lo and behold, when doing a simple model, it's this case crossover type of analysis that I can talk to you about later, looking at those 67,000 kids with, uh, that went to the emergency room with asthma, she saw that you know, it, even after accounting for seasonality, that there's a high risk for uh, or rel high relative risk for being uh, admitted to the ER as a function of, of, of temperature relative to warmer temperatures, like 60 degrees. Even, and this, uh, this kind of association was, even to account for seasonality, had amplified, uh, 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 amplified uh, risks in, in, in different seasons. Uh, and so you could do this mashup around the United States, for example, and she found that this pattern is, was, was persistent in some locations and, and not others. So real power of using these data to, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a mashup type of way, mashing up patient information with environmental information. And in fact, it's something to think about next time you go on to weather.com. I think the, these types of, these types of uh, industrial uh, entities are very interested in how to look at pay, uh, health in, in using the, the information that, they're, that they are already are capturing. Um, and so this is just the tip of the iceberg. We could start a asking questions about asthma in different ways, uh, different demographic uh, uh, types of analyses. But also uh, asking real, addressing really important issues now in, in re research reproducibility, like looking at different populations, using different data sets, and actually executing the analyses with different uh, analysts. And I think this is all possible using uh, the, the open infrastructure we're proposing.
So here's a snapshot that Renee already showed of, our, of our, how all these pieces work together at different institutes. Again, a, a real honor to, to potentially work with all these people. So we're uh, getting some causal analytic tools to apply to our data sets that we're collecting at Columbia and, and at my institution. So critical questions we want to, uh, we want to try and ask, uh, for example, the socioeconomic context actually influence disease rates? I think that's a big, big question. What's the effect of air pollution on and disease as it's manifest in the clinical record? How do adverse uh, weather conditions influence hospital use? And what pharmaceutical drugs actually lead to <coughs> adverse health outcomes? And of course, we want to use the new emerging tools for doing uh, data science and, uh, uh, for example, deconvolving these complex uh, the complex potential web of, uh, of causality using tools from Greg Cooper and Vasant Hanovar and also untangling this issue of time as, as well with respect to different diseases. All these tools are already openly available. But uh, uh, one issue, one important issue I wanna, uh, I wanna bring up before I, I conclude here as I'm running out of time is again, we wanna make this accessible to individuals. And so we have funding available to sponsor students to come to different institutions to kind of get a hands-on training on to do this type of stuff. We're gonna have a workshop coordinated here at, our, at, at, the, at, the, at the hub here um, to do a two-day hands-on workshop uh, with, um, with a keynote speaker. We'll have a remote exchange program where, in, where students are trainees could go to different institutes, spend a couple of weeks there just to learn uh, uh, and spend time in a different place with this remote project. And we love, we're going to disseminate electronic training resources like things like Jupyter Notebooks and, uh, and, and, and perhaps other um, uh, R Shiny apps to really make, to, to disseminate the, 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 the power of these data. So again, we want to really untangle the, the variation due to environmental exposure and phenotypes. And again, I thank all of you uh, for coming. And of course, my, uh, my great colleagues here at Penn, Penn, at, at Pitt, Penn State, and of course, Columbia. Uh, and with that, I, I don't know if I have any time for questions, but of course, I'm around all day. So please, please come and uh, find me. <laughs>